All right, all right. Hey, welcome back. It's Jason Coleman, mortgage broker with Price Mortgage. And those who follow me know that I'm a huge car enthusiast. And, and part of the reason why I'm a huge car enthusiast is I didn't get my driver's license until I was 21. I uh, went through, I, I entered Juvie Hall at age 13 and in and out of halfway houses. Uh, I almost had a car at age 15 until I stole my dad's truck and I wrecked it while he was on a business trip and I never got to get my uh, car. So um, those of you, uh, this is my Corvette, this is our uh, Nova, um, and then I have a couple other cars that I, I drive around on a daily that, so I don't run up miles on these other cars. But anyways, I follow this guy, uh, Lucky Lopez. He just changed his name to Lucky Lopez. And he came out with this um, incredible video I think we all need to take a look at here and decide what are the repercussions of the stimulus from 2020 and 2021 where no one had to pay rent, no one, there was a moratorium on rent, so there was a uh, forbearance on, on uh, mortgages, so you didn't have to pay your mortgage, uh, that no one had to pay their student loan debts. I pulled a lot of credit where it's like, oh, in, you know, in forbearance, no one's paying their student loans. So all that's gone now. And here are some of the effects of what happened. Now, this is in the Las Vegas area. And also I'm gonna show you another video uh, by one rental at a time of what's happening with Las Vegas. Now Las Vegas is very similar to the Phoenix, Arizona uh, market as far as real estate goes. Uh, and it always has been. So in, in 2007, 2008, when everything went down, the cities that saw the biggest run-ups were also Las Vegas. They have similar weather to ours. It's, it's very weird. We're, we're very similar. And uh, Phoenix is one of the top run-ups, you know, hottest cities in the, in the nation, as well as a handful of others like Austin, Boise, which crazy enough, Boise was one of those places, um, some places in um, Florida and whatever. So I try and take a macro view on what's going on. Now I know real estate is local, but Phoenix was one of the biggest run-ups in the nation as far as pricing goes and values go. So I'm paying close attention to that. I'm also bringing to your attention that, uh, you know, I, I think that second homes, Airbnbs and rentals are, are a lot of the inventory we're seeing right now coming to the market. As we approach 14,500 uh, listings, active listings right now in the MLS for the Maricopa County, uh, I, I think it's growing at about a thousand homes a week so there's less demand and more listings, which is great for buyers. You can have more choice, less competition. And, uh, uh, you know, it's so like we sold our second home Airbnb in March, right? I've, I've said this over and over. And now there are 13 listings that are in that same neighborhood. And uh, only one has gone under contract in the last 30 days, which I find very interesting. I also find interesting that in a lot of the descriptions, it says great Airbnb, you know, great, very profitable Airbnb. But what you have to take into consideration is these Airbnbs were bought in 18, 19, 20, even 20, mostly 20. And they bought them at around 400, 450, right? Somewhere in that range. And so if you refinanced uh, in 2021 or whatever, then you got a super low rate and you, you were very competitive and were able to cash flow that Airbnb property. But I bought in 2021 and what happened to us, even though we had a super low rate, is we weren't cash flowing. So we, I knew that interest rates were going to be going up. So I was like, eh, I think that we're gonna see a slowdown in the economy, interest rates are gonna go up. We're gonna unload now before there's any competition. And now there's a bunch of competition in those areas, as well as Munns Park, that's a, another place I'm focusing on. There's now 51 listings. A week and a half ago, I posted there was 27 listings in that small little area of Munns Park. So these are second homes, Airbnbs, you know, type of thing that are coming to our market as inventory. So let's check out Lucky Lopez. I think this is going to be very eye-opening. If you're in the market to buy a car, an automobile, you know, it's, uh, used cars have been gaining in value over the past year or so as the inventory has been stifled. So uh, let's check out what Lucky Lopez has to say here. And then we're going to flip over to uh, one r rental at a time. Let's check this out. 
Also, a big shout out, today is my first day I'm posting as Lucky Lopez on YouTube. Now, I still have my company, Automotive Life, which is gonna be all about helping people build their automotive uh, businesses, but I wanna branch out a little bit more because I'm not only about the car business. I love to talk about finance. I love to talk about real estate. I love to talk about all kinds of stuff, sports. So I wanna give this channel a little bit more spin because as we start going out and venturing and meeting these people, you'll see how the car business kind of lines up with everything, especially with real estate and finance. But anyways, let's go ahead and get in the video. So the main reason why I made a video about this four months ago is when I was sitting down with one of my bankers, I got very scary numbers from him. He kept telling me that they had multiple loans, uh, defaulting first, second, third payment defaults, which is really bad, but majority of these loans were produced from 2020 and 2021 during the actual pandemic. So a lot of these people were, I call them stimulus ballers, people that had you know, $4,000 a month income that could traditionally not finance or get approved for these types of vehicles were getting approved. They got back stimulus, they weren't paying their rent, they weren't paying their bills, and so therefore they were be able to buy these cars more and more and more. Now the reason why I wanna make this follow-up video is because a lot has changed. The repo rates have skyrocketed. Now, during the pandemic, there was a lot of uh, rules and regulations that allowed banks to not basically foreclose on people when it comes to homes. They also had the same thing when it came to repoing cars. Now, we're gonna go after just repos of cars when it comes to actual banks. We're not gonna talk about petty loans and all that other stuff, but one of the things that a lot of these banks were forced to not go repo people's cars. I'm gonna show you a Kelly Blue Book article right here. All the articles will be linked in the description below, but it talks about how the government was telling a lot of these banks not to go and actually repo people's cars because it was kind of spread all over the place. There's a lot of repos. There's still over 2 million repos during the pandemic in those years, but we don't count them because we don't know if those were the real numbers or not. Fast forward to 2022, and we are sitting, as of right now, 2.2 million repos. Now let that settle in. In 2018 and 2019, through that whole year, it took us that long to get um, a little over 1.8 million repos. We're sitting at 2.2 million and we're only halfway through the year. That just lets you know how far and how crazy this is. So when I came out there and tell a lot of people, especially these finance people, that this is an indicator, uh, the automotive indicator that there's a recession coming, there's bad things coming, we're about six months to a year ahead of the real estate market. A lot of people judge, oh, well, if the real estate market pops, that's when you can tell things are bad. The car business, once you see auto loan defaults, it's the first thing that goes, and that's about six months to a year ahead of the real estate market because people will let go of their cars, they'll let go of their other things before they let go of their house. Whatever else. Now, the reason why I'm bringing you here and I want to show you this is unfortunately, um, my friend, he didn't want anybody knowing where his place is at, which I can't blame him. People try to show up and that's why there's barbed wire. They try to break in and steal their cars. But his lot, it's a little over two and a half acres, is completely full, 100% full. They said that every time there's something really bad happens, they extend their yards. So instead of renting it, they're actually purchasing this because they believe that the recession is gonna be a lot longer than what people anticipate. And the information they get from the banks is very scary. So just to show you on how big and massive this lot is, because like I said, not only when you do repos, you have to keep them there. If they file bankruptcy, sometimes these cars sit for six months. So you need to have something like eight to 10 acres to store all these cars. Now this is just one company. A lot of the other repo companies here in Vegas are also expanding. So we're here at one of the biggest auctions in Vegas. If you look behind me, you can see it. I was gonna show you from the inside as well as the outside, but if I show you from the outside, I physically have to take a car and drive. So we could probably talk for about 10 minutes before I reach the end. And this is what people don't realize, how big these auctions are and how many cars are sitting here. Because this mystique of, oh, there's not that many cars at the auction, there's, you know, the repos are not as bad as what you say they are or what they say on the news. Because you gotta remember, we were talking about this stuff like four months ago, you know, when everybody was still overpaying for cars insanely high. And now that the repos have shot up, I'm gonna show you why. So we're gonna go over here. Now there's probably in the thousands sitting behind me that are being staged waiting for that. Now you gotta remember, they go to the repo yards first where they fill up, where if they file bankruptcy, the car could sit there for a few months and before it even makes its way over here. Once it gets here, now it's ready to be sold or it's on a permanent hold for whatever type, maybe legal action, lawsuits, bad VIN numbers, whatever the case is. 
then it gets staged here. So all the cars you see right here are pretty much ready for sale. And that's the scary factor. So we're gonna go ahead and go inside. I'm gonna walk around and show you a little bit of not only the bank repos, but what's going on in the dealer auctions to let you guys know that the market is slowly falling and the prices are gonna be going down. Don't believe the hype. Don't believe what dealers are telling you. Like, oh, there's a shortage of cars. There's not. And I'm about to show you why. Sale. Like I said, there's thousands of them here. If you look behind me, there's this yellow fence. Everything back that way is all the cars that are being staged uh, for either hold for repos, they're waiting for service. Um, some of the banks are holding them for, you know, like I said, the trickle out the effect. And I can't show you how deep this is because right now they're actually doing inspection, but I'll try to see if I can hold it up. So imagine literally one mile driving this way full of cars. Now that's just here in Vegas. We actually don't even have that big of an auction. The ones like in Riverside, California, Sacramento, they're like two times the size of this one. Texas, Dallas, same thing. There's a lot of auctions that have just like this where there's thousands upon thousands of cars that are just sitting here waiting to be uh, sent up to the auctions. So you can see uh, if you're in the car market, I think waiting four to six months, you're going to get a smoking deal. I think there's going to be some pain coming to the market as far as used cars go, as far as, um, you know, recession causes lack of, uh, you know, people spending money. If they're not spending money, then you're most likely your business is going to slow down and maybe it's time to unload that side by side. It's time to unload that extra car. Maybe you can't afford, maybe you lost, you got laid off from your job. Now, JP Morgan Chase just laid off. I, I, I want to say it was, 8,000 people in the mortgage uh, division that they have. 8,000 plus a few more hundred were relocated to other divisions, right? So the mortgage business is really, really slowed down. Wells Fargo's laying off, JP Morgan's laying off, all the big banks are laying off, the mortgage companies are laying off. Um, you know, you had better.com laid off 4,000 employees. So the layoffs are starting to happen. This is an indication of what's happening in our economy. And the smart money is really looking at where their finances are and they're starting to crack down on their spending. So this is going to affect everyone everywhere. So here at One Rental at a Time, this is a real estate, uh, this is a realtor in Las Vegas and he's talking about the uh, inventory levels and how fast they're coming to their market as well, which is, again, I, I said, it's very similar to the Phoenix market. So just to give you a macro view, let's check out one rental at a time. I'm gonna put links in the uh, comments or the uh, description area so you can go watch the whole video. I'm only using a few clips so you can go watch the video and maybe go subscribe to those channels. They're fantastic channels, by the way. Let's check it out. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about Vegas. It, yeah. uh, it has changed. And uh, again, I think the party is over is a fair right there's still people at the party but you know when a party's over it's over and now people are milling about the drunks the druggies the cops have been called right the party's over exactly like right now is for me this is the opening salvo right the cool kid just walked out of the party yeah he, 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 just, <laughs> he grabbed his girl he just swooped out that seems maybe normal par for the course, but you have no idea what's, what's coming behind. 50% margin. You have 50% of people out there that see what's happening, understand what's happening, and are willing to react to what's happening. And then you have people that don't really understand what's happening yet. They're still living three months in the past. So you still have some agents, some buyers that are putting in list price offers that still are a few months behind where we're at. Um, you still have sellers that believe in least in Las Vegas that we're going to get some wealthy Californian with a you know, suitcase full of money and yeah. they're going to get top dollar for the house. It's going wish, to wish pricing, baby wish pricing at its finest. And, and that's fine. But after a week, after two weeks, after three weeks, no matter how optimistic you want to believe that you are, there's no refuting the results. And so that's why I say it's happening. We're in the middle of this change, but in one month, that change is solidified. No matter how foolishly optimistic you are, you're going to get slapped in reality here very, very quickly. And it's happening. What it's going is to closely monitor the inventory levels, right? Agreed. If inventory levels are dropping, 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 supply and demand's out of whack, and you know prices are going to reflect that. Now, conversely, 
when inventory starts rising, you really have to look at that and go, okay, is this isolated? Did we have three bad weeks? Sometimes you have three crazy weeks, then for no reason it reverses. So that's why I, in the last couple of months videos, I said, hey, we really need to keep an eye on this, but let's not make sure this isn't just an isolated occurrence as opposed to a trend. You know, this starts happening two, three, four months. Now you have a trend on your hand and you really have to, you know, heed that warning. So let me go over this with you. I'm going to, I'm going to pull up these numbers. So in Las Vegas, our inventory has gone up for nine weeks in a row, which, you know, look, that's not good by any metric, but there have been times before where inventory has risen for nine weeks and then it tapers off and we have normality. So again, don't freak out just because something is trending, mm. but here's why I'm more inclined to freak out because look, listen, listen to these numbers, right? You know, if you're going up a little bit here and there, whatever. Nine weeks ago, we had 2,272 homes on the market. This is a Wednesday, nine weeks ago, exactly nine weeks ago. We added 117 homes. Eh, okay, yeah. eh, all right, well, whatever. Two weeks before that, we had added 249 and then we dropped six. So you can't really freak out about it. So 117, okay. Next week, 125. Okay, all right, eh. Then we had 207. All right, well, that's getting a little bit. Now high. we got a trend. <laughs> now we got a little bit of a trend, but then we had 133. So you're like, okay, right. maybe we're going the other way. Let's be maybe. optimistic. Okay, okay. But then we had 258. Oh. Then we had 288 the next week. Oh, no. Then the next week we had 297. Are we going to break through 300 homes in a week? That's 1,200 a month. All right. Well, the next week we had 303. Two weeks ago, that's 50 a day. Two weeks ago, we had 427 in one oh, week. Sh- now, right before I did this interview, I pulled the numbers because this is a Wednesday and that's yep. when I pull my numbers. We went up in this last week, 450 homes. In one week, our inventory rose 10.44% in one week. Nine weeks ago, we had 2,272 homes on the market. Right now we have 4,760. We've more than doubled our inventory, more than doubled our inventory in literally nine weeks. So, (laughs) I mean, how else are you supposed to look at that? It's, it's, It's not just that inventory is increasing, What's disturbing is the rate by which the inventory is increasing. Yes. If we were 100 homes here, then we had 50, then 120, then 60. We're meandering. It's trending the wrong direction, yeah. which really was the right direction. But, you know, nothing to freak out about. So I, you... I've got so many questions, man. Uh, <laughs> All right, the, go, go for it. The first question mm-hmm. I have is you have the numbers up in front of you. Go back to 2018 for me, pre-pandemic. Pick whatever right. month. Well, actually, what month we're in? We're in June. If you have the months for June 18, just so I know, what was the available inventory June of 18? All right. So June 14, well, let's go June 21st of 2018. That would have been yesterday, uh, four years ago. We had 4,358. So we are 10% above a normal year yep. and trending the wrong way. But if you look at 2019, okay. so again, I mean, look, yeah. you know, things can be odd. In 2018 in June, we had 4,311. June 12th of 2019, pre-pandemic, we had 7,979. But then what happened is from June 19th, 2019, to by the end of the year, by December, we were down to 5,800. So, I mean, we shed 2,000 homes in six months in 2019. And that was before the pandemic. Pre-pandemic, yeah. Yeah. But still... Yeah. So this is where the, this is again, why you've got to know your market, your buy box. I believe most markets are going to race back to whatever their 2018 numbers were, roughly speaking, right? Yeah. Again, Las Vegas forever was, I think you were sub 2000 for a while. Yeah. We dropped below 2000, which was uh, a huge, huge, huge crazy. number to break through. I thought you might find that very interesting. Uh, Another channel I want that has uh, maybe a different view, uh, Wealthion. I I definitely enjoy the channel Wealthion. Now, this is a, they bring on a lot of people to talk about macro views of the economy, 
of you know the sovereign debt that we're experiencing right now, the strength of the dollar, and how and where to put your money. So I'm always looking for the inside tip on where to put my money and what to invest in next. And uh, I know I I've been getting a lot of calls that hey Jason, where do you think the stock market is going to go? Hey Jason, where do you think uh, you know? this is going to go or that's going to go. And a lot of people are feeling pain in the stock market, in your 401ks or 101ks now. <laughs> but I don't think the stock market is done just yet. But what I find about, if you want to go visit Wealthion and check out the um, Feds will pivot in the third quarter of this year potential, that is a very interesting macro view of what's going on and what potentially could stop the recession or not really stop the recession, but um, you know, bring rates back down and uh, stimulate, bring stimulus back into the economy, uh, and it's, you know, take credibility away from the Feds. Not that they have much Fed uh, credibility to begin with. So go check out those channels. Hey, I appreciate you watching, and uh, if you drop a like and and maybe subscribe, I appreciate that. I, I I'm not really trying to be an influencer here, but uh, I just want to get this video out to the people that I care about and, and follow me and respect uh, my opinion. And you know, I get a lot of slack from other people in my market that maybe I'm fear driving fear, but I'm not driving fear. I am just trying to drop relevant videos that might help you make decisions about your finances in the future. Again, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.